Welcome back to Bible and Blues, and you may recognize this world. I was in it with a totally different avatar uh, previously. We'll, we'll do a quick walk around later on just to just to refresh yourselves to it. Uh, choosing this atmosphere behind me, because I think that's a really cool window. Um, you know, I can see the stars be, you know, beyond it and, and things like that. So I think it's really cool. Uh, but uh, today we are going through Acts 9. Now, Acts 9 is a very exciting chapter for me. Uh, it is deals with Saul's conversion, which is a really big deal for many branches of the Christian, of the Christian faith. Many of the denominations are what you call Pauline. Uh, Pauline being... Uh, it, uh, we, we follow very closely the, 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 the teachings of Paul. Paul is Saul. So, so, now, you may remember Saul from, the, from, from uh, you know, the last video in uh, Acts 8, where he was actually persecuting the church. Uh, this is a big deal for, for, for the whole thing and shows the power of, of the spirits to change people. And that's, I think that's really cool. Uh, before we get started, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Because uh, the, you're, you actually make the algorithm work. You are the reason, you know, this gets out there. Uh, because uh, we get, uh, we, you know, when you, when you like it, when you share it, it tells the, it tells the algorithm that this is some, some sort of content that you're interested in. Please be sure to do that. Be sure to subscribe and comment down below. Tell me what you think think of what I say. Again, as always, I am not a, you know, a seminary trained theologian. I am a layman uh, reading this and uh, kind of having fun in VR chat with it because uh, it's a uh, it's fun to do it this way. What can I say? Um, so, without further ado, Acts chapter nine. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked for him for letters to the synagogues in, in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the, heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. This is the road to Damascus. The road to Damascus is a classic story, a biblical story of, you see, he was, um, he, he, he was left blind. Okay. He was blinded by the light of Jesus and, you know, he, he got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. His own people were just le leading, led him by the hand uh, for three days. He was blind and he, and he did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of, of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. That, this is a big deal for Ananias. Ananias... Uh, you know, he, he's he's a he's a disciple. He didn't know what was happen, what was about to happen, uh, and he's been, suddenly. I mean, he had he had had the Holy Spirit laid upon him. Uh, now he's having you know he's having you know being told what to do. The Lord Himself, Jesus Christ, is coming to tell him what to tell him what to do, and giving him instructions. Lord Ananias answered, "I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name." So word had gotten around. Word had gotten around what Saul was doing. Saul was not a good guy to the Christians. But the Lord said to Ananias, "Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he, he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. 
Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me to him that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. A lot just happened. <laughs> A lot just happened in this little passage of three verses. You know, Ananias, he was, he was obedient. I mean, he had words. He was like, okay, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, do, it, I'll do what you tell me, Lord. But... You know, this is not a good guy. This guy, this guy doesn't like Christians, and you're going to send me in the in here with this guy. I'll, I'll do what you tell me to, but you got to know. And then when he goes there, he calls him Brother Saul. The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Scales fell from his eyes. And after taking some food, he regained his strength, and he got baptized. So this is, I mean, he, you know, suddenly he could see and everything was being revealed to him. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who called on his name? And hasn't he come here to take, to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. This was such a turnaround. And if you've seen somebody who is a recent follower with the excitement, you can see that same kind of thing as they just they, they just suddenly turn turn to, to God and the excitement and the thrill and the sudden life in them. And this is what we see in Saul. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. We've heard this one before, haven't we? But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night, they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in, in, the, in a basket through an opening in the wall. So we've seen that kind of thing before, haven't we? Baskets, lowering, all this. So, you know, so this is cool stuff happening, that he's being protected. His followers are making sure that he's going to make it out, uh, even though um, these same people, he you know, just a, a few weeks ago, he would have arrested, okay, or had them stoned, or is. You know, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his on his journey had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with, the Hel with, with Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in the numbers. So they, they finally had some peace. You know, that Jesus took this man who was persecuting his people and persecuting him, turned him to his to his his will and made him a tool of good and brought peace. Okay, which allowed time for the church to flourish. Because not good things were happening to the church. Think Colosseums. And lions. As Peter traveled through about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas who was, who was paralyzed and been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up, and those who lived in Lydda and, and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was, she was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, interesting, this is a stop. <laughs> In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was a disciple. Her, her name was Dorcas. This is, um, I've never caught this before. 
just so you understand, I've never caught this. This is a, a female, a woman, who is a disciple of Jesus. I, I just want to point that out because there's a lot of people who have problems with, uh, you know, uh, with women in the church. And I want to point this out because this is something that's a little contradictory for that. Uh, later on, we, we'll, we'll, read, we'll read from Paul and we'll have to discuss that and we'll have to actually get involved with some things with that. Uh, because, as, you know, it's been misinterpreted, it's been handled wrong, it's been used as a, as a bad tool. This is an example here. There were disciples at this time. It's of of female disciples uh, following Jesus, and you know. So, continuing on about that time, oh geez, here we go. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, "Please come at once." Peter went with them, and when he when he arrived. He was taken upstairs to the room. All the windows stood around. Off, oh, all the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes, and the uh, and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with him. Peter sent them all out of the room, and and he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, "Tabitha, get up." She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to the to her feet. Then she called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to, to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with, with a tanner named Simon. Another Simon. Here as the reading of the Lord, thanks be to God. Holy cow! Did we go through a lot there? We went, there was, there, there is so much there. If you, um, not too sure about certain th aspects of, of, of Christianity, uh, if you're worried about people saying that, uh, you know, Jesus can't change people, people don't change. So you have somebody that's maybe they're an addict, they're an addict. Okay. And people can't change. Jesus can change people. Okay. Jesus has power. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. And we need to remember that because it's it things done in the name of Jesus. Okay. You know, there, there is power in the name of Jesus. You know, here we just read about two times. Let me go down some stairs, see what it looks like. That yeah, wasn't bad. Um you know, two times that people use the name of Jesus to, uh, you know, to, to do things. And Jesus taking Saul, okay, and changing him fundamentally from who he was. And then help, and then Barnabas saying, I believe him. I'm on his side. This is, I, this is, I'm with this guy, okay. Uh, you know, so, so going from persecuting to supporting and proclaiming Jesus. Um, you know, these are the, these are some of the things that we know Jesus can do. Uh, so if you need a big change in your life, if the, yeah, it doesn't happen like this all the time, but I do know some people who have had it happen, like boom, and you know they're and and, and you know the change happened in their lives. Um, you know, my friend Dar, uh, you know, she says, you know, she says Jesus slapped the taste of alcohol right out of her mouth. Okay. You know, she's funny that way. He didn't do that with me. He made me work for it. Okay. That's because he knows me. If I don't, uh, if I don't work for it, I don't appreciate it. She requires something different. Uh, Saul needed to be stopped from what he was doing quickly. And it was actually a very quick period of time. Uh, you know, but but you know he he had he had quite the quite the experience, um, so he did all this, uh, and and then and 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 Ananias, um, you know, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately, Ananias got up, and this was done to point to Jesus. This wasn't done. For Ananias, although I'm quite certain Ananias appreciated it, but this was done to point to Jesus, to strengthen the church, to bring more people in Joppa, where the, there was a disciple named Tabitha, okay, and, or Dorcas, also known as Dorcas, uh, always doing good and helping the poor, okay, 
And when she died, she got sick and died. And Peter was able to pray and use, and the Holy Spirit said, yes, okay, yes, and brought her back. Uh, this is another time, and it's uh, that the, the the faith, the belief, created a whole different, you know, uh, outstanding you know, circumstance from what we might have expected to see. Um, this is really exciting stuff. I'm going to stop here because it's getting late for me, and I want to get this processed so I can get to bed. Uh, but uh, you know. Um, uh, we did. We did just do our change of clock, so it's much later than my in, in my my body thinks it's much later than it is. So I'm getting tired, and I, I really do appreciate you being here with me. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, do you share my enthusiasm with this? Are you excited when you read this stuff? This is an exciting chapter. I mean, if you knew who Saul was and who Saul turned into, uh, you read about somebody like Tabitha, uh, you know, a, a woman who was a disciple, which just destroys certain narratives out there. It just destroys narratives that were that have been put out by uh, by some people uh, who said that you know that you know, that, it was, that that it was made to keep keep women down. That uh, Christianity keeps women down and things like that. And it's like, no, here was a disciple. And she was doing things in the name of Jesus, you know, and so that's really important. And it, she was so important, in fact, that they decided to bring her back from the dead. OK, and utilize, utilize that and utilize her as a, you know, as as a as a woman to point to Jesus. And I think that's so important that we we find these and point them out. Uh, because I have, I have, I have examples all over the place of uh, of men uh, who who with with power who who do these different things, um, you know, and 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 I, you know, they're and that's they're fine and they're good and I and I enjoy those stories, uh, but um, you know, I just you know, just see that just so I and so I can so I have something here. It's in my tool belt now, uh, and I'm going to remember it next time I'm talking to somebody and they're and they're trying to tell me how. Uh, you know, Jesus did, you know, G you know, Christianity is, is designed to keep women down. It's like, whoa, what about this? So um, anyway, thank you so much for, for uh, watching. I really appreciate it. I'm getting to the point of rambling. I know I'm getting pretty tired. So uh, thank you so much. You have a beautiful day. Uh, tomorrow is Monday. This will post up uh, probably about uh, two or three o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, it'll be five or six o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. So, uh, you, know, you know, take a look at it. I'm, you know, I'm going to try to get it out there. Uh, and, you know, God bless. Thank you very much. Bye.